Hi there and welcome to Math 7, Unit 1, Lesson 8, looking at scale drawings and maps. This uh, lesson is one that you may or may not have done. It's uh, listed as an optional one in our textbook this year. Um, so here we go, let's take a look at this. We're looking at scale drawings to solve some problems here. And you began with a little warm up of a train in a car situation where you had two cities, city A and city B, that were 243 miles apart from one another. And it said it takes a train four hours to travel between those two cities. So in essence, we could say it's 243 miles are happening within four hours, right? That's kind of its constant speed there for the train. But then you had another thing, so the car travels between two cities at a constant speed of 65 miles per hour. So it's going 65 miles per hour to get there as well. So it's a different way. So with the car, we're looking at a car and saying it's gonna be able to go 65 miles an hour and it's also traveling at the same speed so let's say a car is going 65 miles per hour for four hours okay if that's happening with a car then you might have said in your class today that it can actually travel 260 miles in four hours so the question was it says there which is traveling faster the car or the train and be prepared to explain your reasoning when we look at the car example first of all we can see that if it's going 65 miles an hour for four hours, it's going to travel a total distance of 260 miles over the course of the four hours. That amount already is greater than what the train is doing in four hours. The train is going 243 miles in four hours. And so just that alone tells us that the car is going to be traveling faster than the train because if it can get there, if it can get this far in four, that means that it can reach this amount, that distance, in less than four hours. So that means it's going a little bit faster. The second example you looked at was this picture of a driver who was drive, driving at a constant speed on an interstate outside of Chicago. And if she traveled from point A to point B in eight minutes, did she obey the 55 miles per hour speed, uh, speed limit? That's your question there, and you had to explain your reasoning. So to do this, what we're looking at is we do have a, a scale factor or scale down on the bottom. We look here, and I did a little picture of one. So this little shape, oops, I gotta redo this on my right shape here. So this shape right here, let's call it that amount, and that amount, that amount, if I kind of retrace that one there, that's how far my scale is. And in terms of my points, there's one, there's one there, that was 50 and two. So that's like my scale. We have a zero, we have a half a mile, we have one mile, and here's two miles there. If I take my drawing, I could also line it up on the chart, right? I could go right here and say, well, this is about two miles here, and make little hashtags, hash marks there, and I could go two miles there. So I know I've gone two, I've gone four miles, right? I could put a two there, just kind of keep going. So two plus two. I have another two miles right here, so plus another two. Here I can look and think that I got a little curve, a little tricky, so I could put one mile there and then the other mile drops down to somewhere about here. So I have a mile and a mile, so plus a one and a one. And I still got a bit more, and when I look at this bit more, I can see I'm a little bit like, like half, right? Like half of a, of a bit there, half a mile. So in this case here, I have two, four, six, seven, eight, and a half miles is about how far it is using the scale that they gave me down below. So the question it wants to know, and it says explain your reasoning, did this in class again, is did she obey the speed limit? So when you're considering this, what you have to think about is if uh, the driver was going 55 miles per hour, we'd set that up as 55 miles per one hour. That's the rate at which that driver is going, right? So we know that that's the rate she's going, but what happened in reality was this driver did go 8.5 miles in about, when we don't know how long, it said eight minutes, right? In eight minutes is what they did. Now, if she's going the speed limit, if, then those would be equal, okay? So if she's going the speed limit, that would be true. So what we want to find out though is, is that true or not? That's what we want to figure out. So if you're going 8.5 miles in eight minutes, eight minutes is, is not an hour there, right? So we could take 8.5 and divide that by eight minutes, or well, let's, let's leave it here. 
L let's do it this way. We have, <laughs> we have, in this case, we have 55 miles in an hour. And so if I was to figure out how far this is gonna be in X number of hours to see if it's true or not, I would change my eight minutes to see, let's see what the rate's actually gonna be. So to solve this, I'm gonna do some, some cross multiplication. I would do a 55 times X to get 55X equals 8.5 miles. Then I could divide 55 by both sides, 55 by both sides to find that X is gonna equal 8.5 divided by 55, which is 0.15. So at a rate of 55 miles per hour, this car is gonna be able to go 8.5 miles in 0.15 hours. That's strange numbers, I know. So let's change those hours into minutes. To do that, this is 15 one hundredths, and I know that um, for minutes, if it's X number of minutes in there's 60 minutes in one hour. So if I'm just making a proportion here, I take this frac this decimal, turn it into a fraction, 1500 is I'm finding out how many minutes that's gonna be. And so when I do the math here, again, I cross multiply and I would do 15 times 60 divided by 100 and you're gonna end up with X equals nine. So it's gonna take about nine minutes. So if in the case of the story here, if it's true, if the person's going 55 miles an hour, to go 55 miles per hour at a rate of 50, at a, sorry, to go, 50, to go 55 miles per hour for 8.5 miles, that should take them nine minutes. So because our person in the story here was able to get there in eight minutes, we would say it looks like they were going a little bit too fast. It's a long explanation there, but that's just an example of what you're looking at today in this lesson. And again, hopefully that's something that you did in your class and you had a good idea what to do there. All right, so, so she was not going to the right, right speed. We had another op opportunity here. You had a traffic helicopter flying directly over uh, point A to point B in eight minutes. Did the helicopter travel faster or slower? Um, we would probably say it traveled slower because if you look on our chart here, this really, because it's going from a helicopter side, you're going in a straight line to go there to there. That's gonna be less distance and because it's less distance in the same amount of time, it's definitely going slower. But again, you wanna say and explain why there. On the next one, we have a picture of a bicyclist going through, uh, biking through Kansas. And it says that the cyclist rides at a constant speed of 15 miles per hour. So 15 miles per hour. At that speed, about how long would it take to get from Garden City to Dodge City? And they give us a scale down below. And here's our little scale. We can see here that from this point to the edge of my paper is about four miles. And so if I take that same scale, and you have to do a little bit of estimating here and drop that in, we could say, well, it's almost there. I'm gonna turn and pivot and go down. So that's like four, right? So here's four, here's another one, sorry, eight. So four, eight, plus another one makes 12, plus another makes 16, and then 20, 24. We get over here, we're at 28. Here, we're about 32. Here, we're 36. Here, we're 40. Here we're at 44, and here we are at 48, and we're almost there. We're not quite, we're getting close. We're about halfway, so maybe we would say we're about 50. So as an estimate, we could say that it's about 50 miles to go from Garden City to Dodge City. If this person is going at a rate of 15 miles in an hour, the question is, right, uh, at this speed, how long would it take to get from one place to the other? Okay, so we're going 15 miles per hour and they're doing, um, they're gonna go 50 miles. That's the idea. So what we would say in this response here, so that if we're going 15 miles an hour, and again, without doing a lot of fancy math, I can go 15 miles in one hour. In two hours, I've gone 30 miles. And in three hours, I've gone 45 miles. So I already know that in three hours, I can get 45 miles. And all I have left to do is an extra five miles to go. That's all I have remaining there, correct? 
And so five miles in this case here isn't gonna take a whole hour because we think about 15s, right? So 15 is breaking up a, a time into thirds. So if this is my clock here, I have 20 minutes, I have 40 minutes, and I have an hour. So because I wanna go five miles, five miles is gonna take me just a third, here's a third, here's a third, here's a third, it's gonna take me 20 minutes to get there. Okay, so that extra five is 20 minutes. So in total, we would say it should take this guy three hours and 20 minutes at a constant rate of 15 miles per hour in order to get from Garden City to Dodge City. All right, so that's a recap of your lesson today. Okay, just looking at some summary stuff, a summary statement. It says that maps with scales are useful for making calculations involving speed, time, and distance. So we're looking at scales. So with all maps, take a look at the scale and see if you can make some estimations on what's happening there. It's good to perhaps make some charts, make sure you have your labeling of hours, miles, and moving things around. A little bit of review here from probably a previous grade. But let's take a look now at the homework for tonight, which is what you're here for anyways, most likely. Here we go. It says, here is a map that shows part of Texas and Oklahoma. About how far is it from Amarillo to Oklahoma City? Explain your reasoning. So we're looking to see how far is it from this point in Amarillo to this point in Oklahoma City and explain your reasoning. They gave us, first of all, a little bit of a scale, didn't they? Down below, we can see we have this scale right there, which is about 60 miles. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna draw this in orange just so I know I have a copy of it. There's my 60, which means this is 30, this is 60, and that would make that a 15 and a 45 in case I'm wondering. With the map here, the map is not a perfect map, is it? If I took this map and I went ahead and said, well, let's trace it with my marker so you can see it made a little bit better, I'm not making a straight line, am I? I'm doing some curves, I'm going up, maybe there are some hills there, maybe the road's not straight, maybe I have to swing by um, some other fruit stand, I don't even know. So that's my, my trip that I'm going on. If I was to then use my scale and measure this out, I could see that I'm about 60 to get to here, but there's a lot of curving, so maybe it's not quite 60. If I get here, another 60, so I have 60 and a 60. This isn't really a straight line, isn't it? From there to there is 60, but I got all this curvy bit. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it as a 60, but I know it's not really quite 60. There's too much curve happening there. And then over here, I got another 60 with a curve, but again, a little bit curvy, and then a bit more. And that bit more looks like somewhere about 10, 15, hard to say, 10 to 15. I'm really not sure. It's not a perfect map and it's not a straight line, so you have to kind of think about, well, what could that be? And again, this is where there's some possible solutions here, not necessarily a perfect solution for you. Um, so let's see. If I have 60 and 60, that's 120. If I have a 60 and a 60, that's another 120. So, so far I'm at 240 miles so far with another maybe 10 to go or 15 to go, hard to say, hard to say. Now, what's gonna happen here is that again, the estimates, estimations are different depending on if you have a photocopy of the real book. So maybe I have 10 to 15, maybe I have 10 to 20. Let's go ahead and we'll go with the 20 mark and we're gonna say that our distance is 260. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Looking in again at the teacher side, it does say about 260, so it's hard to say exactly but 260. For me, for what I drew, I might say 250. But again, the thing is you wanna explain your reasoning. So if you said 250, so anywhere from 250 to 260, explain why you think that is, no problem. Driving at a constant speed of 70 miles per hour, will it be possible to make this trip in three hours? If I'm going 70 miles, and I'm doing that for three hours, 70 miles times three hours is gonna be 210 miles. So regardless of if I, if I had 250 or 260, if I'm going in three for three hours at 70 miles an hour, am I gonna make it 250 or 260 miles? The answer there would be no, I'm not gonna make it. And the reason for that is because 
I'm only going 210, which means I'm gonna end up somewhere around here, right? I'm not gonna quite make it in that time frame, am I? This 60, 120, 180, a bit more. That's as far as I'm gonna get. I'm not gonna make it to all the way to Oklahoma City. I'm taking a break and getting some snacks somewhere maybe, not sure. Number two. Number two, we have a question that says a local park is in the shape of a square. All right, so let's just draw a picture. I like to draw pictures when I can. Doesn't mean they're perfect, but I like to draw them to help me out. Local park is in the shape of a square, and the map of the local park is made with a scale of one inch to 200 feet. So if they drew it out, an inch would equal 200 feet. Again, mine's not to scale, I just drew a square. If the park is shown as a square on the map, each side of which is one foot long, one foot long, how long is each side of the square park? First thing you have to know is how many inches, how many inches equal one foot? <laughs> That's key. So it helps to know that there are 12 inches in one foot. Why do I say that? Well, because our scale was one inch in 200 feet. So I need to get this drawing into a one inch type of, or an inch scale, which means that a side is gonna be 12 inches long. Think of it this way. It would look something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I could have 12 inches there. That's what it might look like if I was drawing this to scale. So because one side is 12 inches, it wants to know how long is each side of the square park. Well, if one inch equals 200 feet, what they're asking us then is, then what about 12 inches? How many inches is 1,200 feet? Our scale factor is 1 to 200 right so we have one inch for every 200 feet so I'm going to take 12 and I'm going to multiply 12 by 200 to find out how many feet long the actual park would be and 12 times 200 so here's 200 times 12 it's going to be equal to there's zero zero and four put a zero down zero zero and one oops four one two we end up with Oops, sorry, two, I'm not doing my, oops, sorry, two. Sorry about that, too fast. <laughs> so zero, zero, four, and zero, bring zero down, zero, zero, two. We end up with 2,400 feet long is how long that's gonna be. Don't do math too fast. You end up talking and writing fast in your brain work sometimes. So that's the idea for how long that's gonna be, the real park. Now, if a straight path in the park is 900 feet long, how long would the path be when represented on the map? So for this one, we're gonna set up a little bit of a, of a proportion here. Maybe something you did before back in you know sixth grade. So for our scale, we had that one inch was the same as 200 feet. So in this case, we wanna know how many inches are there gonna be if my distance is 900 feet. And so using our Kind of cross products we'd multiply this together to have 900 equals multiply that together 200x now to get the x by itself i'm going to divide both sides by 200 divide by 200 so 200 over 200 is 1 so i just have x over there and 900 divided by 200 becomes the fraction 9 over 2. if you want to turn that into a decimal you could say that it is 4.5 or you could say four and a half, but we would say 4.5 or four and a half inches is how long it would be if we're making the scale for 900 feet. So you have to do some proportional work to solve those things there, um, or just do some um, you know, multiplication again and again, or repeated addition, however that works. Hope that helps you out a little bit. Have a great day.